but uh, many Catholics say, oh, do you, do you believe in, in, in poltergeist? Yes, the ritual, there is an appendix with prayers for, to pray for places with um, action of the demons. Hi, thank you so much for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us, and hopefully you'll learn something useful here. I should also clarify why I decided to share this video before of this old man playing with his dog in the bedroom. The background of this video is this. After the man's wife passed away, his children decided to buy their father a dog, and that is why I wanted to share this video. Some of you commented that this video is inappropriate, but I'd just like to ask, what were you thinking when you watched this video? Just because the man is shirtless you think of something inappropriate? Oh well, I hope this clarifies the whole thing. Anyway, there's something that I'd like to share with you what Father Fortia said about making a pact with the devil. And please don't misunderstand when I say this, but I'm not trying to teach you or telling you to make a pact with the devil. Instead, I hope this video get rid of any wrong assumption of this subject so that there isn't any confusion. But before I get on with the subject of our video, I'd like to address a question posed by one of you in the comments before. The question is, can a demon possesses more than one person? So what I'm going to do now is share the answer provided by Father Chad Ripperger, and hopefully you'll find this helpful. Sometimes you can just say some prayers over people, which I've done, where the possession is mild enough, you say the prayers, and it's just, you know, just some minor uh, deliverance prayers even, and boom, the guy is out. Other times it takes years. So, and they can go on for quite a while. So when they go on for a little while, the church says there's essentially five things it says in the ritual you want to learn. The first is how many there are, because more than one demon can possess a person at a time. And also, one, the same demon can possess a number of different people at the same time. I've actually had that, where um, one demon was possessing two different people I was working with at the same time. So now back to Pact with the Devil. Many think that Pacts with the Devil only exist in literature, but they are mistaken. There are those who consciously, with full awareness and intentionality, make a pact with the devil and devote their souls to him in order to get something in this life. The notion of a formal pact with the devil appears for the first time in the 5th century in the writings of St. Jerome. This father of the church tells of a young man who went to a wizard so as to obtain the favors of a beautiful woman. As pay for his services, the wizard forced the young man to renounce in writing his faith in Christ. In the 6th century, we also see this type of pact in the legend of Theophilus, who agrees to be a serpent of the devil and signs a formal pact. This legend was widespread in Europe during the Middle Ages. Of course, one can write out a pact with the devil, but he is not going to appear. This is often discouraging to the person making the pact because he or she expects this to happen. Even so, if one invokes the devil for a particular purpose, it may come to pass as in spiritualism, for example. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. By the way, just that action right there, just this action when you do it with reverence and piety, um, St. Athanasius, St. Cyprian of Carthage, uh, Tertullian, Felix Minucius, many of the early church fathers say, when you make the sign of the cross with reverence and piety, you drive demons away from you. This, that's right here, this is actually an offensive weapon against demons. So let's do it again. Name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Therefore, on this topic, we also need to make the following points. Number one. Making a pact with the devil does not mean that you will obtain a life of wealth, luxury, or fame. Neither does it appear that the devil was especially generous to them in a carnal way. We need to remember that the devil is a deceiver. He is not God. He cannot give whatever he wants. And number two, a person can always repent of the pact whenever he wants to with a simple act of the will. Upon repenting, the pact they made remains as ink on paper, no matter what the terms of the deal were. Even if the possibility of repentance was excluded in the pact, such a clause is useless. God has given us the freedom to do as we want. We cannot renounce this gift. This is also valid in eternity. In heaven we will no longer want to sin, and in hell we will no longer want to be forgiven, but our freedom remains intact. Many seem to think that the devil can grant one success in business or in a profession, that he can give one wealth or fame. But what we have to remember is that the power of the devil is limited. Worldly success depends on a complex interplay of causes and effects. The devil can only tempt humans to be part of his plan. Take this for example. The devil can tempt a manager to choose one worker instead of another. But this temptation can be overcome, so not even a simple thing like this is certain by making a pact with the devil. 
The great destructive power of a demonic pact is that the person may think he is condemned no matter what he does. It is difficult for him to see that he is still as free as before to repent and revoke the pact he has made, returning wholeheartedly to God. I hope this video is helpful in getting rid of the confusion about making pacts with the devil. For the last part of this video, I'd like to share what Father Forti has said about phantoms. Some of you have probably heard about phantoms before, but I thought it's something rather interesting to share here. Infestation is, um, is when uh, the, it, there is a spirit in a place. If the phenomena continue, I say continue another week and I will return. And then I do a stronger uh, prayer. When I say stronger, I address more to the demons. And only if things were very, very bad, I will ask permission to the bishop to do the exorcism over a place that appear on the new ritual. But uh, many Catholics say, oh, do you, do you believe in, in, in poltergeist? Yes, the ritual, there is an appendix with prayers for to pray for places with um, action of the demons. Uh, not ordinary actions, but extraordinary actions. But you have to distinguish between poltergeist, things move, but the smell, terrible noises, uh, you feel presences, uh, things like that, and phantoms. I thought there were no phantoms when I began in this job. But finally, seeing several witnesses that they watch exactly the same at the same moment, now I believe. What are the phantoms? The phantoms are souls of purgatory that manifest to us. That is an experience in every culture and everywhere in the world. Not from the Middle Ages, from Greeks, Romans, they knew that they were phantoms. And they are souls of purgatory. In the Summa Contra Gentiles of St. Thomas of Aquino, he speak about that when he speak about purgatory. And he specifically says that uh, some souls are permitted by the will of God to manifest on this earth for the good of the living and to ask for prayers. And he said specifically that their purgatory is on a specific place of the world. They always appear as a human being with clothes. They look at the person and they disappear. They never speak. They are in a place. Very often where somebody has committed suicide. Very often. Because it's a breaking of the order of God very serious. They never speak. They are not with a blanket. They are with normal uh, uh, clothes. No, nothing move. No bad smell. No noises. Just they appear. Yeah. And when that happens, if the person that lives in that house begins to say masses, especially masses, the spirit disappears. Many places where there was a story of a phantom by generations with many witnesses. A Christian arrived there, pray for that soul, the ghost disappear. Yeah. Well, then that is all for the video this time. Thank you so much for being here with us, and if you have any suggestion about a subject or person I should cover in future videos, don't hesitate to let me know down in the comments below. For those of you who'd like to support our works, I left a link to our PayPal donation down in the description box below. Thank you so much in advance for your support and contribution. Well then, until the next one, stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless you.